there are a lot of reasons why you might want to include some kind of randomly generated string of numbers and letters in some of your scripts. So let's talk about how we can do this in Python. All right, go ahead and pull up Visual Studio Code with me. I'm in the terminal and I'm just going to open up a Python shell today just so that we can play around with Python right in the terminal. So I'm gonna type in Python 3, hit enter, and now I am ready to go. The first thing we have to do is we're gonna need some kind of source for the computer to pull from in order to then choose some random bits of that source. So to be more clear, Let's just start with creating a string of random letters. We're going to import something first. We're going to import string. Now this library comes standard. You should be able to just go ahead and hit enter. Now I have access to be able to just quickly utilize either numbers or letters or punctuation, things that I don't want to have to sit there and type out. So for example, if I wanted it to choose some random letters, I would have to give it a list of letters. So I don't want to have to go through and type out the entire alphabet just like this into a string. Instead, what I can do is use string dot ASCII underscore letters. And what this is going to do is going to give me back if I hit enter all of the English alphabet letters from lowercase to uppercase, which is super nice because now we don't have to type all of that out. The last thing that we have to do to now make random letters is we're going to import the random library. And this one, again, is another of those free libraries that comes with just the standard Python installation. Now we are able to use some of its methods and functions like choices. So if you type in choices, that's plural, we're going to start the opening paren, and then we're going to just put in that same thing that we just experimented with, the string dot ASCII underscore letters, because we want it to pull, let's say, five random letters from the English alphabet. So we have our source right here, the string dot ASCII letters, and then we're going to put a comma and K equals, and this is where we're going to set how many of those letters we want it to return to us. So I said five, so let's do five and close the paren and hit enter. And now we've got it. We've got a list of random letters, five random letters, and we're, we're good to go. We can now either join these up together or use them however you need to in your script. So let's say we wanted them to not come out as a list, but just, you know, squish them all together. So it's just a string. If I were to, to run this again, but I'm going to assign this to, I'll just say T equals, and then what we had above, I'm going to hit enter. So now we can see, yeah, T is yet another random list of five characters. And we can join those all together by just doing empty quotes dot join and then T, which is our list right now. And that squishes them all together into just one single string of random letters. All right, so that was with letters, but how can we now choose some random numbers? There's no reason to go through the whole string thing like we did before. We could do string dot digits, and that would then be our, our source for the numbers that we could choose from. But that's getting overly complicated because the cool thing about the random library is that we actually have a function that is ready to go with integers. So one way we could do this is by doing random dot rand range. And then we're going to put in our our cap, right? Our the the highest number that we want it to go to. So maybe let's just do 10 and close the parentheses and hit enter and you can see it is generating random numbers up to 10. Another thing that you can do with ranges especially is if we go back into random dot rand int and then we can set maybe um, maybe we'll only want it to be from 5 to 10 so I don't want anything less than 5 and these are also inclusive so it does include 5 in that pool of, of available choices same with the number 10. 
So if we do this, we can see it's staying within that range of five and 10. Let's say we want to get into kind of the realm of security. Maybe we're trying to generate tokens or passwords. Well, you should still be careful. And I really do recommend you actually read some of the documentation, which I'll link down below. We do have access to another library called Secrets. And this is the one that's recommended for those kinds of things where it's a little bit more risky, right? We've got to generate a password. It's going to ha have a certain amount of randomness and uniqueness. So we're going to import what's called secrets. Now, again, this should be standard in your installation with Python. Now, there are a couple of methods that are already available to us that are going to be similar to what we've already seen before. If we type in secrets dot rand below, and then we're going to say the cap again is 10. So it's going to choose a number underneath 10 and it chose a random number and that's one. And you can see it's staying within that range here. And as you can see, we did get zero. So the actual range is going from zero inclusive to whatever number we specify inside of the parentheses. We can also pass it in a, a source list of things, just like we did with that first example. So if we try secrets dot choice, this time it's singular, open up the parentheses and let's put in string dot ASCII underscore letters, close the parentheses and it chose C. So you can see that it's only choosing one letter though. So you can see there are some similar things that secrets, the library of secrets is able to do for us. If you only wanted to have one library imported, maybe that's the way to go. However, secrets can actually be used to create some more interesting things like tokens for maybe an API. We can type in secrets dot token and underscore let's do URL safe since we're talking about a web based application for this. So we're just going to open and close the parentheses. This is a good one, right? This is lengthy. This is some good random characters and it's all URL safe, which is also really nice. Another thing you can do is secrets dot token again, underscore. This time we're just going to do hex because this is going to return us a hexadecimal random text string. So if I hit enter, well, oh, need the parentheses. If I hit enter and you can see this one, this time it's even longer and that's pretty cool that it's, uh, it's all very randomized, very unique. And this is going to be a lot safer way to do it than just trying to come up with a way for you to mash some things together. And as you can see, this is a lot longer. It is using kind of the, the default as far as how long this should be. So we could actually change this to, let's say, I only want a 16 byte text string in hexadecimal. It would return a smaller one. So I believe uh, currently right now, I believe it was 32 bit bytes, but I'm not totally sure on that one, especially since it can change depending on the security protocols that this library relies on. So the default, if you just leave it without the number in there, it's just going to do the default for kind of your basic security. And that should still be pretty sufficient for a lot of things that you may end up doing. And that's a great way to, again, create tokens, things that you might need for an application of some sort, an API, maybe some kind of temporary pass phrase, that kind of a thing. So you'll definitely want to check out the link below for the documentation on the secrets library, because it's going to have a lot more information to you than is within the scope of this video. Now let's say we, we have a list of things that I could do in the day. Activities equals, and I'll just make up some things here. Now I have some random activities that I could do during the day, but let's say I can't decide which one I should do. So I'm going to have the computer tell me which one I should do. If we again use random, and this time we're going to use dot choice singular because we just have time for one activity, right? And I'm going to pass in activities into the parentheses and hit enter. And now I get that I'm going to draw. The computer has now made choices for me, which is kind of nice sometimes. <laughs> and now let's say, you know, I actually, I could fit in maybe one more activity, right? So let's just do random dot choice says. So we're going to choose two now, right? So we're going back to the activities, but K is now going to equal two because we want two activities for this next hour. And now we've got 
code in Python and draw, <laughs> that's perfect. Now that we know a little bit more about how to use Python to create random strings, how are we gonna use that in a script in real life? Check out this project right here for how to choose a random lucky winner from a list of names.